Okay. Let's talk. So last month, we found out in the most random announcement of all time that the Harry Potter saga is being rebooted on HBO Max. This time in the form of a 10 season TV series that will cover all seven books. Something that everybody asked for, I'm sure. The film series ended in 2011, which wasn't that long ago, and that's not all, because just a few days after that announcement, it was officially announced that Lionsgate is also in the process of rebooting the Twilight Saga into a TV show as well. That coming just 11 years after the end of the movie franchise. What the fuck? Look, it's no secret that Hollywood is currently in a state of franchise monarchy. I think everyone has been hyper-conscious of that, especially in the last couple of years. Every studio in Hollywood is trying to desperately secure themselves some billion dollar franchise to rival with the likes of Disney, and it's difficult not to notice the try-hard aspect of it we are constantly being exposed to. It feels like every week I come across some complaints about Hollywood's relentless pushing of re reboots, sequels, remakes, and adaptations. We're constantly exposed to the never-ending and exhausting conversation about superhero fatigue and the frustration over the revival of old franchises. Evil Dead just had a reboot come out in theaters a few weeks ago. Indiana Jones has a fifth movie coming out this year, 41 years after the first movie. Bad Boys 4 is reportedly in the works. Beetlejuice 2, we're getting a Spy Kids reboot. There's apparently an Exorcist sequel coming out this Halloween. We had Halloween, last Halloween, and even with TV. Hollywood tries to capitalize on iconic names all the time now. We just got that 90s show on Netflix, How I Met Your Father on Hulu. Zoe 101 is apparently getting a reboot. Starsky and Hutch, the 1975 buddy cop show is getting a reboot. Robocop is getting a reboot. Legally Blonde, Fuller House is a thing that existed not too long ago. And in what I I think is the dumbest, most corporately bankrupt move in recent Hollywood history, we are getting an American TV adaptation of Parasite. Oh, for the love of God. And it feels tiring, right? After a certain point, it all feels very empty. Especially because a lot of these revivals or adaptations of beloved franchises don't really work out. Anybody remembers that 2017 Power Rangers reboot that was supposed to become the next big thing? I don't know if you knew, but this was meant to be the first of seven announced movies. And that idea was cancelled really real quick because the movie tanked real hard. And on TV, it's even worse. Fate the Wings Saga was cancelled two seasons in, we just talked about the Gossip Girl reboot being dumb as shit. A bunch of reboots of iconic movies and shows from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s are being cancelled left and right. There was a 24 sequel series that disappeared real fast. The True Lies TV adaptation just got cancelled. Like. It's been an absolute mess, and you know there's only more of it coming. So, with this complete insanity, and while I finish working on a certain video about a certain show with vampires that everyone has been harassing me about, I decided to make a list about a bunch of franchises that Hollywood just refuses to let die. Those franchises that we've known forever, and it seems like no matter how badly they're failing, we just can't escape them coming back every few years. And yes, I could go on and on about Star Wars or the MCU, but that's too easy. I want to talk about other franchises that have been bugging me for a while now. I picked nine of them, and we're gonna break them down right now. So, here you have nine franchises that Hollywood just won't let die. Starting with... Number 9. 
Men in Black. This feels like the perfect start to the list. The first two Men in Black movies were massive hits that undeniably solidified their place in pop culture through the years. The odd pairing that were Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones worked really well, against all odds, and it genuinely created a franchise that was unlike anything we had seen before. It was weird and funny and wacky and it just clicked right with audiences. But then, in 2012, we got Men in Black 3, and it became quite obvious that Sony and Columbia were kind of pushing their luck. Despite being successful at the box office, there was a general consensus amongst fans and critics that the movie was an absolute disappointment, far from the quality of the first two films. I personally remember seeing this one in theaters and being bored out of my mind the whole time. Okay? I don't even know who you are. Anyways, long story short, it was very clear that by 2012, the franchise was a bit outdated and would probably be better off being left as a thing of the past. But Sony, a studio that is constantly desperate to establish massive franchises, was not ready to let that one go. They were determined to find a way to revitalize the franchise, and the ideas they came up with were kind of insane. I don't know if you know this, but uh, just a few years ago, Sony was planning on making a Men in Black sequel that would also be a crossover movie with 21 Jump Street. The fuck? I know it sounds like I just made that up, but I swear to you, that's the truth. It's a very well-documented project, you can look it up. Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill were both slated to come back in their roles for the movie. It was going to be directed by Phil Lord and Chris Miller, the directors of the two Jump Street films, as well as the writers of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and there actually was a lot of buzz in Hollywood about this movie. A lot of people had their eyes on it. However, the project got stuck in development hell and completely fell apart after years of back and forth. After which Sony Pictures opted to shift the franchise's direction altogether, abandoning the crossover idea for a straight reboot. See, they believed the quickest and most effective way to reinvigorate the franchise was to take the exact same concept as the original movie and then replace Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones with two actors who were currently very popular with audiences. And so, a couple years later, in 2019, we got Men in Black International, a brand new take on the franchise featuring a new set of MIB agents, this time played by Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson, who were both just coming out of the very popular Thor Ragnarok. Men in Black International was meant to be the starting point of a new Men in Black trilogy, except the movie sucked ass and it kind of bombed at the box office, causing future plans to be halted by Sony in their development stage and any sequel they were envisioning was immediately cancelled. The movie came out for Four years ago, and as of right now, there are no plans for new Men in Black movies moving forward, but it is only a matter of time before a new reboot arises. It's been kind of a mess behind the scenes. In 2021, a new Men in Black 5 was reportedly in development, Will Smith was set to return, but then that project died. Then in 2022, it was reportedly a Men in Black TV series that was in development, but that also seems to have gone away. And you know what? Good! Let it die! Men in Black was a product of its time. Its camp and its absurdity were clearly made for the 90s and very early 2000s. I don't know if that concept works when you try to quote modernize it. It's like trying to use more CGI to revitalize Jurassic Park. And speaking of which, number 8, Jurassic Park. Okay, look, I'll admit, I might be a bit biased with this one because I personally do not like any of the Jurassic movies past the first one. The original Jurassic Park is a fucking classic and one hell of an impressive feat for cinema, and I love it very dearly. I guess the first Jurassic World is okay. I've only ever seen it once when it came out in 2015, and I remember thinking it was... Fine. But overall, I strongly believe that the first Jurassic Park is the only genuinely great movie in the franchise. And I personally think the sequels 
should have never been made. Jurassic Park 2 and 3 are quite forgettable in my opinion, even if 2 has its moments. I cannot stand Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I think it's one of the worst major blockbusters to come out in the last 10 years. And I can't even comment on Jurassic World Dominion because I never finished it. I tapped out halfway through the movie because I was just that bored. These movies should not exist. I mean, hell, I'm not crazy because Colin Trevorrow, the guy who directed all three of the Jurassic World movies, admitted last year in an interview that he thinks Jurassic Park should have never had any sequels. I'm not making that shit up. He thinks his own movies should not exist. Now that the Jurassic World trilogy is over, I'm sure that the studio is trying to figure out how to move forward with this franchise. I think there's an actor from Dominion who kind of hinted at that, but I don't know how that's gonna work out for them. Jurassic Park was super impressive because at the time we had never really seen dinosaurs like that on screen. You had maybe like one or two Godzilla movies and that was it. Like that shit back then was fucking impressive, but like like now? Look at what we have. There's the Meg 2 coming out and the trailer starts with a CG dinosaur. Like it's not impressive anymore. It's not the same. We get huge massive monsters on screen all the time, always, constantly. It's not gonna hit the same. Anyways, I don't have much more to say about this, so I'll close it with this clip of Amanda the Jedi just speaking straight facts about why Jurassic Park should never be remade. What's a movie that should never be remade? Jurassic Park. Yeah. yeah. That one benefits yeah. so much from the time and the combination of like CG and animatronics that any attempt to remake it will look terrible, will yeah, fail miserably. You don't need to do it. Just leave it the fuck alone. Yeah. I think most movies don't need to be remade if I'm being completely honest. If it's a good movie, leave it alone. People need to get more in the mindset of remaking movies that had good concepts or executed terribly. Yeah, yeah. I agree yeah. with like, that. Like, stop taking good things and remaking them. It's dumb. And there you go. Took the words right out of my mouth. Number seven. Charlie's Angels. I know this seems weirdly out of place when talking about big Hollywood franchises, but hear me out. I don't think most people realize the insane obsession Hollywood has with Charlie's Angels. It's like a relentless, one-sided, simp love story that's been persevering for almost 50 years. But okay, let me go back. For the quick backstory, Charlie's Angels is a franchise that was kickstarted with an insanely popular TV show that aired on ABC for five seasons from 1976 to 1981. The original angels were played by Jacqueline Smith, Kate Jackson, and the most popular sex symbol of the 70s, Farrah Fawcett. The show was an instant success that took the world by storm, mainly because the whole idea of the show was to sexualize women in what were typical male-centric action movie tropes, and ABC had a genuine hit on their hands. It was a real pop culture moment. Farrah Fawcett famously left the show after only one season, which resulted in a highly publicized lawsuit against her because she was sued by ABC as a result. But throughout the five seasons, a number of women played the roles of the angels as previous ones left. It became kind of a tradition that would see a new entry in every season. Quickly after that though, sensing the obsession over the show growing, ABC attempted to kickstart a spin-off of the show called Tony's Boys in 1980. The spin-off revolved around a wealthy woman named Antonio or Tony, who runs a private detective agency where three top-tier agents, Tony's boys, solve crimes and go on various missions. And if that sounds familiar, it's because it's literally the exact same premise as Charlie's Angels, but gender swapped. The only idea behind this show was to sexualize handsome men in the exact same premise, hoping that it would recreate the success of the original series. But after a backdoor pilot was integrated in season four of Charlie's Angels, ABC changed their minds and decided not to pick up the spin-off. And so the Tony's Boys project died shortly after and Charlie's Angels ended its run just a year after that. Okay, now you have the backstory, let's get to the stupid shit. While 
it started as a popular TV series back in 1976, Hollywood only realized the true potential behind the franchise in the year 2000, when it was successfully rebooted into an over-the-top action flick starring Drew Barrymore, Lucy Liu, and Cameron Diaz. It is the most 2000s thing I have ever seen. It's so camp and out there, but I loved it as a kid. It is just dumb fun. Unfortunately though, that potential was very short-lived. Charlie's Angels 2000s was successful, but after a failed sequel in 2003 that crashed and burned at the box office, the studio quickly cancelled the third and fourth movies that were in the works. The franchise went dead, and Hollywood has miserably been trying to revive it for the last 20 years. At first, there was a proposed Charlie's Angels animated film that I believe got stuck and died in development hell around 2007, after which ABC took the big step and decided to reboot Charlie's Angels in the form of a new TV series in 2009, 30 years after the end of the original show. They made this reboot a big deal. They were super serious about it. They even brought in Miles Miller and Alfred Goh to be the showrunners of the new series. Now, I realize these names probably don't mean anything to you, but these guys are the real deal. They were the creators and producers of Smallville. They wrote the story of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, which is still considered to be one of the greatest comic book movies of all time. Pizza time. They wrote Shanghai Nights, and more recently, they teamed up with Tim Burton to create Wednesday. Yeah, needless to say, these guys know what they're doing. Miller and Go developed the shit out of this reboot. They even cast Minka Kelly in one of the lead roles, and after a long two years of build-up, the Charlie's Angels reboot series finally arrived on the very symbolic September 22nd, 2011, date of the 35th anniversary of the original series. And it flopped immediately. <laughs> If you don't know, Charlie's Angels 2011 is notorious in Hollywood for being one of the greatest failures in television history. Most people have forgotten about it now, like to the point where most people don't even know this show existed, but those who know about it have heard about it for a reason. The show crashed and burned so hard and so fast that it was cancelled by ABC after only only four episodes due to historically bad ratings. They never even got to finish shooting the first season, which was supposed to only be 13 episodes long. And ABC only agreed to air seven of the eight finished episodes before swiping Charlie's Angels 2011 under the rug, effectively making it one of the worst performing television shows in history. Things got really silent afterwards, and for a while, it looked like like the Charlie's Angels universe was finally put to rest. But Hollywood wasn't done. Refusing to accept the fact that audiences have not been interested in this franchise since 2000, Sony Pictures tripled down on their desperate efforts and delivered the historic box office failure that was 2019's Charlie's Angels. A dull and uninspired reboot slash sequel of the original series directed by Elizabeth Banks and starring Kristen Stewart. The movie movie very famously bombed with critics and audiences, grossing only $8 million in its opening weekend against an estimated production and marketing budget of $97 million. That's just a disaster. And prompting the inevitable and immediate cancellation of its planned sequels. This thing came and went so fast that I still have trouble believing it actually happened. Well, let's hope that this time the message was clear. Charlie's Angels as a franchise is like this stubborn tantrum from all the old folks that run Hollywood who desperately want another version of that show they liked in the 70s, but it's not gonna work. Just like Men in Black, Charlie's Angels is a product of its time. You can't recapture the very specific vibe and tone of the 
these shows from the 70s and 80s. You're never gonna get that. I mean, Star Wars has been trying for 46 years. Because the reason why it feels the way it feels is because it exists in your memory. Stop trying to replicate it. It's never gonna work. Charlie's Angels is a product of its time. Let it die. Number six. James Bond. Okay, I might get crucified for this, but am I the only one who's really over James Bond? I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't hate James Bond. I do enjoy some of the movies in the franchise, but I'm just kind of over it? I don't know, it just doesn't feel like what it used to be. And I can't even blame it for it. James Bond has been around for a while now. The character was created in 1953, I think, in a series of novels created by British author Ian Fleming, and he was brought to the screen for his first adaptation just nine years later in 1962. It was an immediate success, and the franchise became a staple of British cinema, one that took over the world very quickly. At the time of making this video, Video, Bond has now been played by seven different actors across 27 films. The rest, as they say, is history. I mean, I, I don't like that saying, but it is true. In 2023, there has been a grand total of 25 Bond films in the main series, the two remaining ones being technically unofficial entries in the franchise. But we are far from the glory days of the Bond saga, where each movie would be a banger after banger that made people go crazy. Dr. No from Russia with Love and Goldfinger were the last movies in the series that came out in a row and were all universal universally and critically acclaimed bangers one after the other. And to tell you how long ago that was, these three films are the first ones. They're literally the first three James Bond movies. They came out respectively in 1962, 1963, and 1964. Which means we haven't had a solid three film streak in almost 60 years. And since then, the Bond franchise has been extremely hit or miss. And if you ask me, it's had more misses than hits. And we don't need to look too far for that. If we just look at the last two Bond eras, the writing is kind of on the wall here. In the last 28 years, there has been a grand total of nine Bond movies, four with Pierce Brosnan in the role and five with Daniel Craig. Out of those nine movies that came out between 1995 and 2021, only three of them are good. GoldenEye, Casino Royale, and Skyfall. The six other movies range from kinda mid, half-assed and forgettable to flat-out terrible. I still think Casino Royale is the best James Bond movie ever made. I know some people will pick Skyfall, but even then, Casino Royale came out 17 years ago and Skyfall came out in 2012, 11 years ago. I can't remember the last time a James Bond movie came out and genuinely got people hyped. It's not that the movies aren't successful. They are, they make money every time, but like, they just kinda come and go. Most of them are forgotten and never talked about again. Anybody remembers Quantum of Solace? Spectre? Even No Time to Die is already fading away and it came out a year and a half ago. It just feels like the saga isn't serving the way it used to. All the thrills of high octane action with secret agents betraying each other, etc. It's just not the best at it anymore. If anything, I feel like the John Wick franchise took that spot. John Wick now has the hype James Bond used to have decades ago. That is the fun secret agent action movie series that gets people really excited because it does shit we've never really seen before. James Bond now is just kind of there, but it feels tired. You can tell it's lost its thing a little bit. It just doesn't have the same impact on pop culture, which is like fine because this series is so old now. It makes sense that it doesn't have the same pull, but I'm just saying. No Time to Die was Daniel Craig's final outing as Bond, and apparently the studio is actively looking for the next actor to take on the role. But honestly, if they just decided to stop it there and end the series with No Time to Die, I'd be totally 
totally fine with that. And I think people would get over it really fast. But yeah, I don't think that's ever gonna happen. They're never gonna let James Bond die. I wouldn't be surprised if they decided to cast a younger Bond and made the next era a bit more like John Wick to try and revitalize and modernize the franchise, which I would be really surprised to see how that goes. I've seen some people online say they'd like to see a crossover where James Bond and John Wick go head to head. And so I asked you guys on Instagram who would win a fight between the two, which by the way, follow me on Instagram. 4,000 people voted and John Wick won the vote with a staggering 72%. Sorry, James, it looks like you're not coming out of this one alive. <laughs> Either way, James Bond is not going anywhere anytime soon. He was around before my parents were even born, and I think he will be here long after I'm gone. Anyways, let's move on. Number five. Fast and Furious. This one is a bit of a doozy for me. I think I've mentioned it before in a video or two, but the Fast and Furious franchise has been a guilty pleasure of mine for years now, just like it has been for like millions of people. These movies are so dumb. They're stupid beyond anything you can imagine, but God, they're just so much fun. Because yeah, make no mistake, these movies know what they are, they know what they're here for, and they embrace the silliness to the fullest extent of their capabilities. It's so funny. They're not all bangers though, but when they are, the Fast and Furious movies are a good time. Okay, quick rundown for everyone who's gonna ask. One is whatever, two is so stupid that I find it hilarious. I don't remember a single thing about three. Four is a mess. Five, six, seven, and eight are a fucking blast that will destroy your brain cells one by one, but I love them for it. They're incredibly entertaining. Nine is genuinely one of the worst movies I've seen in the last decade. You can skip it. I hate this movie with a passion. And the Hobbs and Shaw spinoff is just really forgettable, but I'll give it a point because Idris Elba referring to himself as Black Superman is fucking iconic. I know a lot of people adore these movies. Like, it's a real popcorn blockbuster series that only demands of you to leave your brain at the door when you go watch it. And as I just said, I like it too. Fast and Furious is fun and I will die on that hill. But even as somebody who finds some enjoyment in that kind of brain rot, I gotta admit, this has been going on for too long. Universal is ready to do anything to keep this thing going. Even though I'd like to quickly remind you that this franchise started 22 years ago. And I feel like that's not gonna keep working out for them. They just refuse to let it end and it's gonna turn against them. I think it's kind of already started. And I know, I know what you're gonna say. But Dylan, they said Fast 10 was gonna be the last one. Yeah, um... Don't hold your breath. Around the time Fast 8 was starting to roll around, it was indeed confirmed that Fast 10 would be the final movie in the franchise. It was the end of the line and people accepted that. I mean, sure, okay, it's gotta end somewhere. 10 movies sounds perfectly fine, you had a great run. Then, around the time Fast 9 was released in theaters, news started to come out that Fast 10 would be split into two parts, meaning we weren't getting one more movie, but two. Okay, it sounds like you're trying to stretch it because you don't really want to end it, but I let it slide. I'm in a good mood today. I'll pretend I didn't see it. But then... <laughs> Just recently, Vin Diesel apparently hinted at the fact that Fast X might actually be the first movie of a three-part story. They added another one. That means that the quote-unquote final movie in the franchise is actually just a new trilogy. Are you fucking kidding me? Just end it. There's no such thing as a three-part movie. You're fucking lying. This is just Fast 10, 11, and 12. You guys just don't want to look like assholes for walking back your announcement about Fast 10 being the final movie. Especially because let's not forget that right before the pandemic, it was confirmed that another spin-off was 
was in the works, this time to focus on the female characters of the franchise. And while it looks like Hobbs and Shaw 2 is very unlikely to happen, the fact that Kevin Hart and Ryan Reynolds were introduced in that movie makes it that I wouldn't really be surprised if they got their own spin-off somewhere down the line. And you know what? That's not even all of it. Oh no, it is not. Did you guys know that there is a Netflix original animated spin-off of Fast and Furious called Fast and Furious Spy Racers? Oh no, I'm not kidding. This is real. It is a TV show about Tony Toretto, Dominic Toretto's little cousin, who is played by Tyler Posey. Yes, Scott McCall from Teen Wolf. I was born to win. I'm a Toretto. They even got Vin Diesel to voice Dom in a bunch of episodes. Being a Toretto's got nothing to do with what you do in that car. Being a Toretto... It's about family. And the rollout of this thing is just insane. They fucking churned the fuck out of this project. In two years, they released six seasons of this show and it ended its run in 2021. Let me repeat that for you. Six seasons in two years. Universal is as greedy as ever with the Fast and Furious franchise. They're so desperate. They don't want this thing to end, but stop it. If Fast 9 was any indication of where things are headed, you better quit now while people still kind of like you. Because I've been seeing reviews of Fast X and it's not looking good for you. So please, don't be stupid. End it. Ugh. Okay. Next. Number four. The Disney live action remakes. Okay, I know this is a weird one and I'm cheating a little bit, but I guess we could consider this series of movies a franchise, right? Right? No, just me? Okay, whatever, let's just consider it is for this video. I don't think I've ever talked about this before, but the Disney live action remakes are a personal pet peeve of mine that just refuses to go away. I feel like we all hate them and yet they just keep happening because despite the fact that everybody hates them, these movies somehow keep making a fuckload of money at the box office, so Disney just keeps making them. The live action remake series, I would say, started with the Cinderella remake that came out in 2015. This movie's fine, I remember liking it, and honestly, I'll watch Lily James in anything. Except for Pam and Tommy, fuck this show. It was a fun little venture, everybody thought it was a one-time thing, nobody batted an eye. A year later though, in 2016, we got the Jungle Book remake. And I'm not even gonna lie, this movie fucking slaps. I liked it a lot. It was visually very impressive. Idris Elba as Shere Khan was the shit. And overall, it was just a good time. And it made Disney a shitload of money. Another year later, in 2017, we got the live action Beauty and the Beast. Starring Emma Watson. A movie that I never finished. I watched it at home and I don't know what happened. I tuned out right before the ball scene and never went back to it. I thought it was whatever, but that said though, the movie was incredibly successful. It's probably the one that had the most hype. It also made a shitload of money. And this is when Disney kind of started to lose its shit. See, Jungle Book made almost a billion dollars at the box office, Beauty and the Beast made over a billion dollars at the box office, so they started to have dollar signs in their eyes, and they got greedy. How greedy, you ask? Well, in 2019, Disney released not one, not two, not three, but four live action remakes in nine months. We got the live action Dumbo by Tim Burton, which sucked ass. Two months later, we got Guy Ritchie's Aladdin, which sucked ass. Less than two months after that, we got the Lion King remake, which sucked ass, although it was visually gorgeous, I'll give it that. And then in November, we got the Lady and the Tramp remake for the launch of Disney+. Plus. And I've actually never seen that one, but I hear it's not glorious. It's worse. It's so much worse. That is just an insane rollout. And the worst part is, 
It worked? Yes, Dumbo notoriously flopped really hard at the box office, but despite the fact that everybody hated Aladdin, it still made a billion dollars at the box office, and The Lion King made an outstanding $1.6 billion at the box office, and it is currently the seventh highest grossing movie of all time. It's just, it cannot be understated just how much money these movies make Disney. They were slowed down by the pandemic, obviously, but they weren't gonna stop. No, after all of that, they just decided to remake everything, literally everything. In 2020, we got the Mulan remake, which in my opinion is the worst out of all of them. Then we got the dreadful Tom Hanks Pinocchio remake, which was one of the worst movies I saw last year, and just a few weeks ago, we got Peter Pan and Wendy, which is just so painfully bland. I tapped out 45 minutes in, and I don't think I'm ever gonna finish it. Oh, and you thought I was done? I know, I know, you thought you were safe, because I caught up. I'm 2023, yeah, okay, there's no more. Oh, well, you're wrong. You thought Disney was stopping there, despite the fact that none of these remakes have been universally liked since 2016? Well, think again, because The Little Mermaid is coming out, like, now. We're getting a live-action Snow White in 2024, there's a sequel to The Lion King on the way, Lilo and Stitch are getting a live-action remake for some reason, Hercules is happening, The Hunchback of Notre Dame is in the works, Bambi, The Aristocats, and the most egregious of them all, we are getting a live-action Moana, a remake of a movie that's not even 10 years old yet! It came out in 2016! Moana! Moana! <laughs> That's right! What are we doing?! I can't even be mad at them for doing it because these movies are ridiculously profitable. Like, I get it. But jeez, there's a part of me that's eternally sad that Disney's entire business model has become why have original ideas when you can just not. They really are the world champions of creative recycling. I mean, at least they still have Pixar. Like, that's still original. Just in the last couple of years, they gave us Coco, Turning Red, and Soul, which is probably my favorite Pixar movie of all time. So, you know, at least I'm glad we still have that. They don't just aimlessly continue continue to churn out unnecessary sequels that never really have a psych I fucking lie number three Toy Story for the love of God can we stop already why are we doing this why do you keep going I don't know if you guys are aware but a couple weeks ago it was confirmed that Toy Story 5 is currently in the works and I only have one question what in the Flashpoint Paradox are you guys fucking doing? Why? Why would you do this? You guys made what I would genuinely consider to be one of the greatest trilogies in the history of cinema. Toy Story 1, 2, and 3 are all great. 3 is an almost perfect movie. This whole trilogy is fucking lit. It's so good. And all you had to do, all you had to do for it to remain this legendary accomplishment in pop culture was let it be. You just had to let it be. Do not take the risk to ruin that. I understand it goes against your business model, but it's the one trilogy where I would say you have a fucking duty to show some artistic integrity and let it be this great piece of art that existed at one point in time without touching it. Why are you still going? You think I gave a shit about Forky, my guy? You think I care? Look at him. I don't care. I don't care about Forky. Look at him. What's it gonna be, huh? Are we just gonna keep making them? Is that the plan? Are we just gonna be making Toy Story 6, 7, and 8? Huh? Are we doing Toy Story Tokyo Drift? Toy Story vs. Superman Dawn of Justice? Stop it! Stop! It's done! You made it! You already achieved the greatness! Let it be! You're just gonna ruin it! Stop taking things that are precious to make it a cash cow! You can keep milking until people can't stand it anymore! There are certain things that are sacred, my guy! You already fumbled the bag with the Buzz Lightyear movie not even a year ago! That should have been your hint! You're fucking Disney! You have so many things that make you so much money! Why can't 
once you let go of that one cherished thing. I'm so done. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't fucking care. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't care. I don't want to do this anymore. Number two. Alien. All right, this one is just kind of annoying. I feel like I just have to get through it. Look, Ridley Scott's Alien is, to this day, one of the greatest horror sci-fi movies ever made. James Cameron's Aliens, the 1986 sequel, is one of the greatest action sci-fi movies ever made. These are just facts. Nobody's gonna argue with that. These two movies fucking slap. Both gave us something strong, special, unique, with one of the most iconic heroes in cinema history, Ellen Ripley, and villains that are quite impossible to forget. It was fantastic. And then... It just kept going. After the disappointing Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection crashed and burned in the 90s, the 2000s saw studios shamelessly attempting to turn the Alien series into an undeserving blockbuster franchise with a terrible crossover event that was Alien vs Predator in 2004, which was followed by Alien vs Predator Requiem in 2007. These films completely drained the franchise of its soul, losing the audience audience's interest entirely and completely panicked, 20th Century Fox quickly decided to shift gears and things became very messy. They got so desperate for this franchise to work that they ended up causing a creative nightmare behind the scenes for a very long time. In 2012, original director Ridley Scott came back to the franchise after 33 years to direct a prequel to his first film titled Prometheus. It was a wildly different take on the franchise that gave a new breath to the Alien universe, which should have been exciting, but the movie quickly proved to be extremely divisive amongst fans, often criticized for being boring and pretentious with its themes, but also praised for its direction and more philosophical approach to the universe. Even to this day, half of the fans think Prometheus is a masterpiece, and half think it's a boring and bloated mess with no real merit aside from glorious visuals. Overall, the movie did okay, it made money at the box office, but still underperformed when it came to the studio's expectations. A sequel to the movie then became unsure and Prometheus quickly fell into oblivion. Four years later though, in 2015, Neil Blomkamp, director of the critically acclaimed District 9 and Chappie, but we don't talk about Chappie, was brought in to write and direct a new Alien film that would be taking place right after the events of Alien 2 and disregard all of its sequels. It was meant to be a soft reboot of the franchise and people were actually kind of excited for it. It was even confirmed that Sigourney Weaver would be coming back as Ellen Ripley to give her character a proper ending. It was all incredibly promising and quite exciting. And then the movie never came out. Neil Blomkamp's Alien was abandoned by the studio in its pre-production stage in a move that left everyone so fucking confused until we found out almost immediately after that the project was axed because Ridley Scott wanted to make his Prometheus sequel instead. He pulled a Lannister. He literally hijacked Blomkamp's movie to make something entirely different. I mean, after all, Ridley Scott is iconic, he's very powerful in Hollywood, so the studio caved greenlit the movie, and Blomkamp was booted. And so, in 2017, Ridley Scott released Alien Covenant, the official direct sequel to Prometheus, which was a disjointed disappointment of a movie that left both critics and audiences cold and bored. Seriously, this movie had so much hype only to be met with a resounding meh from the entire world. I know it has its fans now, but when it came out, it really went away fast. Nobody really cared about it. Not only was the movie incredibly underwhelming, it also severely underperformed at the box office, and suddenly, the studio got incredibly hesitant at the idea of giving it a sequel. And this is where things got fucking unhinged. For the next six years, 20th Century Fox and Disney have been on a never-ending ping-pong match of announcing and cancelling an Alien Covenant sequel. In 2017, Fox said they would move forward with the Covenant sequel. It was in active development, Ridley Scott was teasing the story and building hype, but then, just a few days later, the project was cancelled. A month after that though, it was back on the table, and Ridley Scott was even giving very specific details about the plot of the movie. This thing 
was taking shape. It was actively being worked on. But then, no news came for an entire year, which is not a good sign usually. And it was reported that the project might have been quietly cancelled, but just a month after that report, there were more details about the story coming out, meaning the project had maybe not been cancelled. Then, at CinemaCon 2019, another year later, Disney announced that the new Alien project was not a movie, but a TV show that seemingly had nothing to do with Covenant. They made a massive announcement about how that was the future of the franchise, but just a month after that announcement, Variety reported that the movie directed by Ridley Scott was gonna happen anyway. Like, aside from the show. But it was unclear if that movie was going to be a Covenant sequel. And then, a year later, in September of 2020, Ridley Scott himself confirmed that his movie was still in development. But, in 2021, another year later, reports started coming out saying that Ridley Scott's movie was up in the air and nobody actually knew if it was gonna happen for real. This thing was a shit show and it went on for so long. And finally, it's in March of 2023, just a couple months ago, that 20th Century Studios confirmed after six long years that Ridley Scott's new Alien movie had started shooting. Oh, and they also announced that there is another Alien movie called Alien Romulus that is completely disconnected from the rest of the franchise that's also in production and will be released on Hulu. Oh my god. In case you haven't noticed, the timeline of this fucking mess leads us to this year, 2023, which means studios have been trying to figure this franchise out for 31 years now, and they still haven't done that. This thing has been a mess since 1992 when Alien 3 flopped, and studios have been in panic mode ever since. This franchise now has eight movies with two more on the way, and the last genuinely great one was the second one, which came out in 1986, 37 years ago. I'm sorry, that is way too long to try and convince people this franchise is good, so for the love of God, let it die. <sighs> and now, let's move on to number one. Terminator. Oh god, where do we even start with this one? It's almost crazy to think that the last good Terminator movie came out 32 years ago. Especially when we know there have been four movies released since then. After director James Cameron brought us The Terminator in 1984 and Terminator 2 Judgment Day in 1991, which is still considered to be one of the greatest action films of all time, studios decided to carry on with the franchise without its creator. And to this day, none have been able to accomplish that successfully. Following the underwhelming T3 Rise of the Machines in 2003, studio execs opted to take a different approach and the franchise was rebooted by director McG in 2009 with the universally despised Terminator Salvation, which drifted away from its original cast and took a heavy science fiction spin with the storyline, with the movie taking place in a post-apocalyptic future. Salvation was one of the most expensive movies ever made at the time, but it completely failed to interest audiences. It flopped at the box office, and the planned sequels were cancelled a few months after the film's release. But Skydance and Paramount Pictures refused to back down, and in 2015, they rebooted the franchise once again with Terminator Genesis. Gen Genesis. Why do you spell it like that? Terminator Genesis, the first installment of an announced trilogy, which famously marked the return of Arnold Schwarzenegger as the iconic T-800 after a 12-year hiatus. Unfortunately, it quickly proved to be another miss because the bland and repetitive movie was plagued with negative reviews and brutally failed to meet expectations at the box office. Saying fans were utterly disappointed with Genesis is like a crazy understatement, mainly due to the film's 
ultimate plot twist being unceremoniously spoiled in the trailer, like months ahead of the release. And obviously, the planned trilogy for this new incarnation was quietly scrapped by the studio. And then, because the message wasn't clear enough, Paramount teamed up with 20th Century Fox to attempt yet another reboot of the series just four years later. Oh my god. Terminator Dark Fate came out in 2019, erasing the four previous films from the franchise's timeline and claiming to be the one true sequel to 1991's Judgment Day. But, despite building some mild hype with a decent first trailer, which teased the return of Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor, Dark Fate crashed and burned at the box office in the most spectacular way. It's reported that it lost the studio around a hundred hundred and thirty million dollars which is just wow it became one of the most disliked entries in the series making audiences realize that the terminator franchise has been trying to tell the exact same story over and over again for the past 30 years all in a desperate attempt to recapture the magic of the second movie but this thing is so dead even mackenzie davis who played one of the main characters in dark fate seems dead doubtful that the planned sequels will ever be made. She said in an interview with Enemy that at this point, quote, thinking there would be a demand for a seventh film is quite insane. And you know what? I agree. I think somewhere along the way, they forgot that the first Terminator movie was not a massive, apocalyptic, world-ending, sci-fi, mega-blockbuster filled with CGI all over your face. It was just a very small-scale and intimate horror slasher. It's just that instead of a Michael Myers, the slasher was an unstoppable killing robot from the future. They added some interesting lore to it, which made it different enough to stand out, and it worked. Maybe that's what they should have gone back to to reboot the thing, but instead, Hollywood did a very Hollywood thing and they believe that bigger always equals better. So every time they reboot Terminator, they just try to make it even bigger scale than the last one because they're convinced it needs to be this insane spectacle of sci-fi with fucking spaceships and explosions and people just don't give a shit. I think most people are now agreeing that Terminator should have never been a blockbuster franchise in the first place. It should have only been those two movies. Even Arnold Schwarzenegger admitted like a week ago that the sequels were not well written, including the ones he was in. Like it's done, the thing is dead, the moment has passed, nobody cares anymore. And yet, James Cameron recently confirmed that a complete reboot of the Terminator franchise is currently being discussed. Fuck that. And there you have it, nine major franchises that just refuse to die. Thanks for watching, I really needed to get that out of my system. And now I'm gonna go back to work on my originals video. That should be coming out really soon, thanks for your patience, I know this one has taken a while. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about my nine picks, if you have a franchise that you also think should just die by now, just let me know as well, I'm gonna have a lot of fun going through them. Thanks again for watching guys, and I will see you oh so soon. I'm running in the end Be happy when I go A story with a friend A hundred years ago A future in my hands At least I keep it low